Hi, Afshan. This is Ellen. I'll be correcting this essay for you. Let's take a look at what you wrote here about switching jobs. Experts throughout the world have debated whether working officials should stay employed in the same company for their whole life or if, or if they should switch from one employer to another once in their lifetime. While the former assertion would provide individuals with promotional opportunities, I completely believe that changing jobs would help acquire a wide range of experiences in their respective career. Okay, so on the whole, I thought you did a good job. Um, but I do want to make some changes. So I didn't like working officials. It doesn't feel particularly natural. Um, and then I guess this is okay, but since you already said for their whole life, I didn't like the once in your lifetime. I think you could have left it out and the meaning would have been clear. And then I didn't also like this promotional opportunities. When we think about promotional as an adjective, we usually think about promoting products, okay, uh, and not so much opportunities for promotion. You could have said um, opportunities for career advancement, opportunities for promotions, something like this. But put like this, it felt kind of awkward, all right? It's a fine difference, but still at the level you need to be. It's a, a difference I want you to know. Mm, and then I also didn't like this expression, respective career. Um, that didn't really make sense why you use the adjective respective. So I would have just left it out. Um, another thing about the sentence is help who acquire. This was confusing. I completely believe that changing jobs would help employees, would help people acquire a wide range of experiences, okay? Or wide range of experience. So some little things here, but because of the score you need, these little things make a difference, all right? So I want you to be aware of them. All right, let's keep uh, going and look at the next paragraph. Working in the same organization for a longer period would provide employees an opportunity to acquire a higher position in the foreseeable future. Careful with your typing. This is because, no comma, they would not only become highly aware about their company's profit and loss situations, but would also develop stronger bonds with their employers, managers, and chief executives, which would help them gain more recognition and attain a status of the best employee. Consequently, they would be promoted to a superior position, which would help them earn higher salary, a higher salary. If, for instance, Anil Ambani would not have worked for 45 years in the Caltech University, he would not have been promoted from a junior professor to the president of the institute. However, working in the same company would not improve their overall skills. All right, N -n -n okay. So, um, I wanted to warn you about repeating the same grammatical phenomena so um, they would not do this. They would do this, which would help them. Okay, so you had a lot of would, would, would. You had a lot of relative clauses. Which would do this? Which would do this? So it was, um, I felt like this first part of the paragraph, not the first part, this whole section, thought I had a lot of repetition in terms of the grammar that you used. So I wanted you to be careful about that. Then. I saw you wrote this if, so I was like, all right, let's see what's going on here. I didn't agree with this. It should have been if Anil Ambani had not worked, not would not have worked, had not worked, he would not have been promoted. So it's a third conditional. Um, using the past perfect would have been better here. That's the kind of grammar that you do want to try using if you're aiming for a seven and a half. So I'm glad that you attempt it. But at a seven and a half, you also really want this grammar to be accurate. So um, try to provide some range and some variety. Uh, like I said, I saw a lot of which, 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 would, would, would. Be careful with all of that. And um, when you try to do something advanced, aim for um, accuracy as much as possible. Then, I didn't really understand this sentence. Well, I mean, why... <sighs> 
They would not improve their overall skills. Typically what we do in this last sentence is we summarize what we've been saying this whole time. And a lot of times what we do is we have a topic sentence here, which gives a general idea, the central idea of the paragraph. And then we develop the paragraph with our ideas and our support. And then here we say, therefore, it is clear that there are benefits to be gained from working in the same company. Okay, that's a logical way to do this. This is like totally changing the scope and the perspective of the paragraph. So I don't know why you did that. Maybe you thought you were linking it better here, but that's not the case. You don't want to do that. So. What you could have done is you could have taken this sentence, put it here, and then said, that being said, working in the same company does not improve overall skills. For this, changing jobs would be beneficial. Okay? That is an organization of your ideas and a progression of your ideas. That makes sense. That is to say, not, we don't usually say this is to say, we say that is to say, working in different companies, especially under a variety of employers, comma, would provide workers an opportunity to handle unique challenges. For example, Elon Musk, the owner of SpaceX, worked in six different space research centers, which provided him with the enormous amount of knowledge related to rockets in space that eventually helped him open his own company, SpaceX, which is responsible for launching the first shuttle to, the, to Mars. Get rid of the. And then look what you did again here. It's a long sentence. It did not need to be this long. It should not have been this long. It's about four lines long. And generally, my rule of thumb is that when you get to the third line, that's probably your sign that it's too long. So he worked in this, which provided him, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, which is responsible. No, you need to cut this out somewhere. Okay, you need to cut it down. Um, related to rockets in space, full stop. This experience eventually helped him open his own country. Uh, I'm sorry. This experience eventually helped him open his own company, SpaceX. Okay? That's how you want to do it. Therefore, working in various organizations helps because working in various organizations is your subject. It's one thing, working in various organizations. So helps individuals reap benefits that could result in a lucrative career, not their, a lucrative career. Fine. In conclusion, although being employed in one company might improve the status of the employee and help them earn more income, I strongly believe that real success lies in the fact that one should acquire plenty of experience from different organizations to earn fame and build a bright future. All right, fine. I want you to be careful. I saw this a couple of times. When you write I, it needs to be uh, capital, not lowercase. So definitely uh, use a capital here. I thought this was good. Uh, I think it needs uh, some work before it gets to the level that you mentioned in your email. It's not quite a seven and a half. I think there's some things to be done. So I want you to heed the feedback that you got here. And um, I'm looking forward to seeing another uh, essay from you. So let's take a look. This is the bird flu. It's really very helpful if you just copy and paste the image into your answer so that I don't have to look for it or click or whatever. All right, so let's see what you wrote. It's not a bar graph, it's a part by, blah, sorry, it's a bar chart. The bar chart represents the total number of deaths caused by the bird flu from year 1990 to 2000. The data has been gathered by the World Health Organization. Okay. Um. Overall, the majority of casualties due to the bird flu happened in the year 2000, whereas a minor minority were affected in the years 1990-1991. Okay, the minority. The minority of what? Are we talking about like percentages here? We're not. So uh, minority for me, um, when you're talking about the majority and the mi minority, it's as if we have in our mind that we're talking about like percentages of a whole. So like majority would be anything over 50%. And we're not talking about that. We're talking strictly about numbers, like countable numbers. So it doesn't feel appropriate to be talking about majorities and minorities here. All right. So uh, I would have liked to see different vocabulary here. So overall, 
the greatest number of casualties happened in the year 20, 2000, whereas the least uh, were affected in the years 1990-1991. Okay? Let's continue. In the year 1990, the total number of deaths that occurred due to bird flu were just over, I don't understand this number, we don't put commas like that, should just be 120 comma, and stayed constant until 1991. After this, the number of casualties increased by 10,000 in the subsequent years of 92-93. The people affected by the disease continued to rise until 1996 and reached, again, get rid of this comma after the one. The number of casualties, careful. The number of casualties, the number of casualties. It's now here twice. The number of casualties, the number of casualties. The majority of casualties. So could you use another expression here? Let's see. Um, the people affected by the disease continued to rise until 1996 and reached 150,000. Figures. That's it. It's all you need to say here. Figures remained relatively steady from 1997 to 2000 with the highest affected in the year 2000, counting for, okay. Year 1997 saw a drastic increase in the number of casualties by 50,000 as compared to that of the year 1990. While the number of people affected by bird flu remained stable in the first two years, the count varied from 1994 to 1996. Okay, that's fine. Um, so I think you should have a general idea about what was good here and what need a little work. Um, careful again, the number of casualties, the number of casualties. You don't want to repeat this. Use words like figures. Again, I thought there were other problems with your vocabulary. So for me, the weak link here would probably be vocabulary, uh, as well as some of these commas, which were strange. Uh, let's see. This, I'm assuming you meant it to be a conclusion. I did think it was a little strange. Maybe you could have signposted it with like an in conclusion. That might have been helpful. Um, let's see. Okay, yeah. So what was the initial number? The initial number was 120,000. You could have said it was a rise of maybe 50%, right? So, or a little less than 50%. Something like that would have been good. So. 1997 saw an increase uh, by 50,000, um, which was slightly less than 50%, a 50% increase. Um, I don't really like this either. The count varied from 1994 to 1996. The, the, the figures varied pretty much every other year. So you had already told us that you know, 1990, 1992 were different, 1992, 1994 were different. So maybe you could have left this sentence out. And even when you had that um, mild fluctuation here, you could have mentioned that. So you don't want to say that the count varied just then. It varied more, but it just wasn't important enough to talk about. So I thought this was good, uh, Afshan. But I also think that there is more work you can do. So keep at it, um, keep improving. I hope the feedback is helpful and I can't wait to see more work from you. Good luck.